शांति फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट दादी जानकी विल नॉट बी कमिंग दिस इवनिंग शी इज इन शांति वन एंड शी इज केप्ट वेरी बिजी because there are over 7 to 8000 people in shantivan all eager to meet daddy so she phoned late afternoon and said that she will try to make it tomorrow morning for the modli class and she told me to continue with the class i said okay daddy <laughs> so i was thinking what subject to speak on and i thought of the topic the subtlety of the eight powers we do know of the eight powers and just now we heard the song the words of which were baba your remembrance fills so much power in me baba talks about becoming powerful and we speak of the eight powers which include all the powers actually these are the main eight powers just as we speak of the eight qualities of the soul the core values we speak of eight core values you know them don't you the first and the foremost core value is truth the soul is truth truth means eternal immortal imperishable so truth has a very deep meaning and that one word truth conveys so many qualities of the soul this is a core value and truth leads to the knowledge so second core value is knowledge every soul is an embodiment of knowledge wisdom that's why it is said whatever comes from outside is called information but what comes from inside is knowledge because that's the core value of the soul and knowledge leads to purity this is the third core value of the soul the knowledge is that i am a soul and therefore my true nature is pure so purity the fourth core value is peace because purity is a mother of peace peace doesn't come just like that it comes only through purity of thoughts words and actions so peace fifth core value of the soul is love love comes with peace if there is peace within there is love for all without any limitations restrictions or any type of changes and love leads to happiness if i have love for all i'll be truly very happy within but each of these core values has many values you know in between in them 
So they are the core values, happiness. Happiness leads to bliss. Bliss is the climax of happiness. And the eighth one is power. So when I have all these seven, ultimately I'm able to achieve the eighth power, eighth value, the core value of the soul, power. And these eight powers include all the powers. So just as these eight core values include all values, truth, knowledge, purity, peace, love, happiness, bliss and power. How many? Eight? Okay. Like Baba, I was surprised, you know, the other day when Baba was speaking to the education wing group. Baba did not mention a word about values. Value education, living values, that's what we are all doing in education. But what did Baba say? Were you surprised too or not? When Baba spoke to the education wing group. Give them the knowledge of the soul and the supreme soul. No, Baba said this, do you remember? The poor things, they do not know the self. And therefore this is the first and foremost thing you have to tell them. Because it's a soul which has the values. You talk a lot about value education. But then the base is who experiences these values? It's not the body. It's the soul. So first the knowledge of the soul is necessary. And then who is the source of these values? It's the Supreme. And therefore the knowledge of the Supreme is very essential in order to experience these values. You have to connect with the Supreme and then we experience these values. So value education would be baseless without the knowledge of soul and Supreme Soul. Just imagine. People in the world talk so much about values. But why aren't they able to inculcate the values or imbibe or experience them? Why is the world becoming more and more degraded? Because they lack the knowledge of the Self and the Supreme. Baba was saying in today's Murli, neither do they have the knowledge, so there are some who don't care about the knowledge of Self or, or God, and not even the devotion, not even bhakti, you know, nothing. Their God is just money, you know, who was saying today. They say, they say money is God. Just as time is money, some say time is money, some say money is God. They don't need another God. And what do we say? God is the key. Baba is the key to everything, to all the treasures. Baba was telling Brother K.S. Raju, the son of Mr. K.V.K. Raju, who was the managing director of the Nagarjuna Fertilizers, who invited the Brahma Kumaris and he opened the first management center in Hyderabad. I don't know if you know of that. Baba and all the time that man also was thinking of money, money, money. But then he realized the importance of this knowledge. And after he died, his son took over who came yesterday to meet Baba. And what did Baba tell him? That all that is your shadow. If you keep your shadow in front and try to hold your shadow, you'll never be able to. Go in front and your shadow will follow you. Because nowadays in business, there is so much up and down, you know, so much upheaval. And he was really very tense, very tense, and very, very stressful. And he, when he met Baba, 
you got so much strength and Baba told him, you have to come every year to feel power in you and he promised that he came after eight years and he really went back so happy, so happy, so contented, so full so powerful he felt before leaving he met me so Baba says these eight core values of the soul can be experienced only when we are soul conscious and then we experience the eight powers very many children do not understand this subtlety of these powers when Baba says we have to tolerate very often Baba says many think why should we tolerate? why should we tolerate? what does he think of himself? do I have to tolerate all the time? that Baba was saying the other day in the Murli do I have to die? do I have to die all the time? can't he also change? do I have to change all the always? in other words do I have to die all the time? and Baba said you have to die ultimately anyway <laughs> so why not do it now? means learn to tolerate in today's Murli also Baba said that why do people fight? because supposing one speaks two ill words the other speaks four reacts, no? he reacts then the first one speaks eight it's like uh, you know, permutation and combination which we learn in mathema mathematics it's uh, may sometimes arithmetical progression and sometimes it is geometrical progression these are words used in mathematics arithmetical pro progression is like two plus two so two and the other one will say four and four plus four is eight so I will speak I'll abuse eight times and eight plus eight is sixteen so then sixteen then but then you know geometrical it's like no geometrical progression is square of that so it's two arithmetical progression is plus two all the time two plus two equal to four four plus two equal to six six plus two equal to eight that's arithmetical progression and geometrical progression is multiplication it's a square 2 into 2, 4, 4 into 4, 16, not even 8 yeah? but 4 into 4, 16, 16 into 16 you can imagine how quickly the number grows that's geometrical progression and what will be the result? I remember once I, when I was young, you know, about 7, 8 years old at that time in India, two currencies were working because after the Britishers left in 47 uh, they, at that time the currency was 16 annas in a rupee the 16 came from the 16 celestial degrees of purity of the moon so from that 16 is like 100 percent and so 16 annas was one rupee and then there were eight annas, four annas, you know, half and quarter and two annas and then this currency was changed into naya paisa hundred naya paisa make one rupee and the currency was such that fifty, fifty paisa was eight annas twenty-five paisa was two annas and so on so and twenty-five paisa was four annas and 12 paisa was 2 annas, you know, 12 paisa, 2 annas now there was a big confusion because both currencies were working and things were very cheap, you know, we used to buy things with just 2 annas we would give to and buy things now 12 paisa was 2 annas and 25 paisa was 4 annas so that means there was a difference of 1 paisa so someone came to a shopkeeper and gave him 25 paisa coin and said I want this for 2 annas so the shopkeeper gave him 2 annas back that means 12 paisa back but that customer said no give me 13 paisa back you understand? 
because I bought for 12 paisa and I've given you 25 paisa, so give me the new currency 13 paisa back. And that shopkeeper said, no, nothing doing. You have bought for two annas, I give you two annas back, which is 12 paisa. No, this was the conflict. And they started arguing and arguing. The shopkeeper had his own argument. If I continue to give 13 paisa to everyone, one, one paisa more, I'll become bankrupt. <laughs> because that time, it was very, you know, money, rupee was quite strong. And he refused. And the shopkeeper abused him like anything. And that the, both abused each other. The shopkeeper got so wild. He took a big knife and he just stabbed him immediately at that very moment. And that person died on the spot. Well, the next day it came in the newspapers, one paisa murder. <laughs> one paisa murder. Well, people read and must have forgotten because every day so much news comes. But why I don't, I'm not able to, you know, forget and I'm able to give this, this, um, Example, because that person's father, the shopkeeper's father, the shopkeeper, he was the father of my friend who was studying with me in school. And when I heard that name, I was surprised. This man, he, he killed his customer. And uh, then what happened? Then I observed the difference in their family. What happened? He was taken to prison, definitely. A big case must be. His children, they were ruined. His whole house was, um, you know, taken on, what do you say, because he had to pay a lot of penalty. He had to pay in order to escape or, you know, say, be saved from the court, or uh, to, to pay to the lawyers to, uh, to, be, to return home or to not be in the jail and so on. Ultimately, he had to give up his house. He had to give up his shop. And he was in prison and he died in prison after drinking. You know, as a drunk man, he died in his prison and his children were ruined. I came to know this when I met my friend after many years and I asked, what happened? And she gave me the news. She, I met her somewhere. But then, it was so sad because he was such an egoistic person. So much ego in him. He used to think that he was very clever. He had lots of money. He had a big, it was a big departmental store. It means at that time. Now, of course, a very big, big, big ones. But at that time, his name was famous in, in that area where I lived, in Bombay. So I was wondering, just imagine if he would have just given away one paisa, what would have happened? But no, the ego worked. Now, when we talk about tolerance, it has so much depth. Why should I tolerate? Some say, but then what's the result? Sometimes we reach this result. But at that time, what, should, what do I think? Maybe I'm, I'm paying off some big karma. Doesn't matter. It's easier to let go now than to stick to it and create more karma. It's easier to forgive now and forget it now than to reap for it in the future. It's, this is easier. Let go. But for that, Baba talks about giving up the I-ness and the minus, as Baba mentioned yesterday in the other day. So tolerance is very easy if I can become aware of my true nature. That's why the example of the tree laden with fruits. It doesn't mean that, oh, I have to always keep on dying, I always have to keep on bending, I always have to keep on surrendering. You always have to be humble. It's too much, too much, we say. But who am I? You know, this very question, riddle, who am I, answers the, all the questions. So when I say I'm a peaceful soul, 
automatically I have to share peace. So this is the positivity of tolerance. Tolerance doesn't mean that, okay, someone senior has, uh, you know, been stern with me or said something to me, got upset with me, and then how can I answer back? And I'm so upset because my senior told me something and I can't answer back. So what I do, I just go in the bathroom and start crying, you know. Some do that. Or they just go and, you know, go to bed and they put their, their head under the pillow and they are keep weeping there because nobody will see them there. Neither in the bathroom nor when the face is under the pillow. <laughs> or they covered their face with the sheet or the, the quilt, so who will know? That's not tolerance. But tolerance means, okay, I am a peaceful soul. I am a loveful soul. When Baba talks about self-respect, he means that. But then there's such a subtle difference between self-respect and ego, such a subtle difference. Very often we consider that ego to be self-respect. This is the big mistake we make. We think it is self-respect. I give you a small example. I, you know, you go to someone's house and the other one doesn't treat you well. You may say, well, I will never go to that person's house again. What does he think of himself? I have my self-respect. Is that self-respect? Huh? Is it self-respect? Look, that person, the way he spoke to me, doesn't even have manners. What does he think of himself? I have my self-respect. Is that self-respect? No, it is not self-respect. It is ego. So self-respect means, I know who I am. I have to keep on giving the love, the peace, the happiness, I have to learn to let go. I have to keep, you know, helping. I have to keep serving. This is my responsibility, as Baba says. Baba was saying, you know, keep saying, you are world servers. So when we are world servers, as Baba is always bestowing, how can I just stop bestowing? How can I say, okay, I will bestow to all of you, but not to you? Well, rule is a rule, okay. It's for all. And of course, Baba says exceptions are always there to every rule. We have to have the understanding. Whatever is there, have the understanding, the ups and downs come. We have to see the twos and fros, the pros and cons, the past and the future. So many things have to be seen. But the seniors know everything. No? They know how to, what is important and what is essential or useful for whom. Okay, this is how we let go. So tolerance is such a great power. In Hindi, there's a very interesting saying, you know. Shila. Shila means a stone. Shil is a stone. And shil, when you make it long she, it becomes pure, something pure. So we say a shila becomes shil because of tolerance. A shila, a stone, becomes shil, means worthy of worship because of tolerance. A stone on the seashore, you know, receives the waves of the ocean all the time, all the time it is receiving the waves of the ocean. And ultimately that rock, piece of rock, which is uh, very uneven, because of the waves of the ocean, it gradually becomes even, smooth, and turns into a shivling. You know the shivling, which is uh, worshipped? Where is it found? You know, it's found on the seashores. Otherwise, how does it, it can't become smooth just like that. The little, little saligrams they are showed, which are in small temp, in temples, they're all little, little 
um, you know, stones, but pebbles like or big pebbles, big little small ro rocks or small stones, but they are surrounded. They are so smooth because the waves of the ocean have ma made them smooth. Constant waves coming upon them. Or a sculptor, he has a piece of rock and he, with his chisel and hammer, is hitting that piece of rock and that piece of rock is tolerating, tolerating, tolerating. But ultimately, what does it turn into? It turns into a beautiful image of a god or a goddess and that's worshipped. Just imagine. So that's why Baba is tells us, children, at this time if you tolerate, you will become worship worthy for half a kalpa. Golden age and silver age, we are not called worship worthy because all our deities, nobody worships anyone. No, nobody really worships anyone. All are deities. No? Who will worship anyone? But at that time, we are, we are sovereigns. We are ruling over the world. But then from copper age onwards, we become worthy of worship. That our devotees worship our non-living images, as Baba says. It's because the, those souls tolerated at the confluence age. You mean our dadis don't have to tolerate? They have to tolerate so much. We don't know. You know, so many things happen. So many types of children. So many incidents. And they are tolerating. Because they know that they have to always keep on giving, giving, giving. That's in their feeling. So this is called the power of tolerance. I have to keep on giving. Giving doesn't mean physically. You know, Baba was saying yesterday, the other day in the Murli, physic, physical not giving. I have 10 rupees and I need those money, those, that rupee, okay, you take. And then I become a pauper. It's not physical. It's my good wishes. It's my pure feelings. It's my pure vision. These subtle things are there. That's what we have to keep on giving. Many think, oh, I have to become best or okay, whatever I have, take it, take it, take it. And then you are left, you know, stranded like. That, uh, it doesn't mean that, that is my madness. I know what is necessary for me and what I can give away, what is useful, what is, is good for others. So that understanding is important for physical things. But when it comes to subtle, subtle things, I am the master of them. No? I don't have to think, it's just like uh, there's a story that once a beggar came to a shop and asked for some sweets, a sweet shop. And the shopkeeper, he turned him away and said, get out, you know, all that. And the shopkeeper very humbly said, okay, never mind, don't give me the sweets, at least speak sweetly. It won't cost you anything. So speaking sweetly won't cost anything. Maybe that sweet which we, which we are going to, that one was to give, that would have cost some two pennies, whatever. This, so these values don't cost, they, don't, they cannot be charged for. But they cannot even be given, they can be just shared, yes. It depends on how much the other takes. Sometimes the sweetness may create, you know, anger in the other one. Oh, I know you're trying to be sweet. This is your smartness. I know you're very cunning and you're trying to be sweet externally. Well, that's what you may think you see in each one's vision. But my outlook is pure. And therefore, I don't mind whatever the other one may think. Still, I have to give him the good wishes. I don't have to react. Now, this is called tolerance. We have to go into tolerance to that extent. So, but now tolerance doesn't also mean that I have to suppress myself all the time. I may not be aggressive, okay, but even suppression is not right. Because that can lead to depression later on. It can lead to stress, it can lead to so many things. 
So, we you know, we have a, it's a very interesting slogan, neither aggression nor, dip, nor suppression, but let it, let it be assertion. The English word is assertion. Assert yourself means say what you have to say. It doesn't mean that you don't have to say. But you should know how to say it. With the good feelings, of course, say it, doesn't matter. With the good feelings. This is to assert yourself. And this is the true meaning of tolerance. And at the next moment, just forget about it. We don't keep the grudges. If we're keeping the grudges, again, it's not tolerance. No, we have to go that far. That's why Baba said, if you have to die, you have to die. Ultimately, we have to, because we have to finish off all our karmas. Karmic accounts have to be finished before we return home. And therefore, as we are on a return journey, these little things will come, but we have to keep in mind that no new karmas are created. Then, sometimes it's easy to tolerate but not easy to accommodate, you know. It's very easy to tolerate. You don't tell anything to the, that person, you know, face to face. Don't react. But then you haven't forgotten it. And you go and tell somebody else. You know that person? You know that person, he is very bad. I don't like him. <laughs> he is very bad, the way he behaved with me. But I didn't tell him a word. Well, but I tolerate it, but I don't feel like talking to him again. I don't feel like meeting him again. So you have gone and told many people. Now what has happened? You know, supposing one wants to vomit. Would he vomit everywhere? Because I want to vomit? You'll at least accommodate, you know, in yourself for a few minutes and reach maybe the nearest basin. <laughs> or maybe nowadays in flights and, uh, you know, they have those sickness bags. They carry that, they give that. In case you feel sick, vomit in that. Don't vomit it anywhere and everywhere. You'll create more sickness. The germs will spread, the infection will spread. So put in that bag, have it with you ready. That's the right place the right spot, the right uh, thing. So, if I have something and I can't uh, tolerate, okay, I've tolerated, but I want to say out, then say it to the right person, the one who can solve it, the one who can give you a solution. But if you go on telling everybody, you know, all that, that is gossiping, is it not? It won't really help you anyway. But you say, oh, at least I said out, I said it and I became light. But to whom did you say it? It can become worse, you know. You know how it can become worse? We in India, we give an example, it's an interesting example, may not be good for the, you know, for the West, may not be the right one, but in India we give an example of daughter-in-law and mother-in-law. In the West, the daughter-in-laws, mother-in-laws don't really have much meaning. Because daughter-in-laws live with the mother-in-law. I mean, not that much. <laughs> Here, the, after marriage, the son lives with the parents and the daughter-in-law also living with the parents. Joint family systems is there. In some, in the West, it's there, I know, but uh, each one is independent. Nobody forces anybody. They, have, they know how to be independent. But then in the, India, it's not like that. Joint family system means too much humble. The daughter-in-law is always tolerating. Now, of course, things are changing. The mother-in-law is tolerating more. The daughter-in-law becomes the boss, you know. <laughs> and the poor mother-in-law has to tolerate. There's an interesting joke on this. <laughs> the joke is that once, you know, after marriage, the daughter-in-law was very proud very beautiful lady and uh, a business lady, you know, many things. And uh, the husband was quite humble. And that day the servant did not come. And for a few days the servant was not to come at home, you know, to work. So the mother-in-law was working and working. And the son felt very sad that my mother is working so much when my wife is not doing anything. 
but he dared not tell anything to his wife. <laughs> so uh, he told his mother, Mother, give me, I'll, I'll sweep, I'll swap. Mom, mommy, mother, you don't do it. I'll do it. And the mother is saying, no, no, son, I'll do it. But they dare not say to the daughter-in-law because she was very proud. So they were, you know, like arguing with each other. And here came the daughter-in-law said, why are you arguing? You are silly fools. It's easy. One day you do, the next day you do. <laughs> Understand? You're so senseless. Don't, why are you arguing? Let me do, let me do. Just, uh, you know, divide yourselves. Today you do, tomorrow you do. But I should do something. No, I am the queen here. <laughs> that was it. But before it was daughter-in-law and mother-in-law means daughter-in-law had to be humble all the time and mother-in-law was a boss. But now things are changing. Anyway, so what I was, I was saying that, supposing the mother-in-law is, you know, is, a, is saying something which the daughter-in-law doesn't like, but she can answer back. You can answer back to the seniors. This is like respect for the seniors. It's good, it's good manners not to answer back. But then she couldn't tolerate, so, I mean, she tolerated but did not accommodate. So she went and told to her neighbor, you know, my mother-in-law is so bad. Every day she is like hen pegging, you know, you know she's all like, uh, like uh, beating me, hitting me, doing this, doing that. And the neighbor said, oh, really? I know, she's very bad. She's like this, she's like that. Now what happened was she fell, oh, I am I'm relieved because I've set out and therefore, okay, whatever will happen, will happen. But what did the neighbor do? The neighbor, she went and told the neighbor, means the, the mother-in-law, about her daughter-in-law, see what your daughter-in-law was saying, along with all the masala, you know, all the spices. She added all the spices, many, many more things, much more than what the daughter-in-law said. Now, what must have been the result? At home, you complain about me to the, my neighbor, now have more. <laughs> so this is what happens. And here we learn to accommodate. But then somebody may say, how much can I keep on accommodating, accommodating? I mean, shouldn't I do something about it? Because too much of accommodation is also not good. It's like adjusting yourself too much. And you can be drained out if you try to adjust yourself all the time, accommodate all the time. You can be drained out. That's why in, um, in that um, you know, self-management course, there is uh, frog syndrome. The example of the frog syndrome the frog is put in a pot in water, in a pot with water, and it is boiled. But the frog has a very good power of adjustment and accommodation. As the water starts heating up, it heats up itself. You know? It heats up itself, and the result is it's able to adjust with the water which is heating up. But then, as it heats up itself, naturally it is being drained away. Its energy is getting lost no? in that adjustment. And then when the water comes to the boiling point, it has reached such a high temperature, now the body of that frog cannot tolerate that heat. Now it wants to jump out, but it cannot do that also. Why? Because the energy has been drained away in adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. And the result is it dies in that boiling water. It could have just jumped out at the beginning, no? Because the frog has a capacity to jump. It can jump out. It can live on earth as well as in the water. So it will not die when it, if it jumps out of the water. A fish may die if it jumps out of the water. But a frog will never die if it jumps out of the water. But it doesn't jump. It has that ego, I can adjust, I can adjust, I can adjust. And then when it's totally drained out, it's finished. In India, we give another example. It's good to know these examples which we give in India. If you want to serve the Indians, 
You know, there is so much of bright burning cases in India. Bright burning cases. Young brides, you know, when they, after they get married, they come to the in-laws home. There, the in-laws keep on pampering them. Bring more dowry from your parents. Bring more money. Bring more money. More money, more and more. But how much can the parents give? But the in-laws, the husband, the brother-in-law, the sister-in-law, they're always demanding, demanding from the daughter-in-law. Now, ultimately, the poor daughter-in-law, she tolerates, 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 accommodates, accommodates, doesn't say anything to anyone. Tolerance power in India is very great. Let me tell you, the ladies, they know how to tolerate. Therefore, they are, they are suppressed, you know. India, the suppression of women is also very strong. They just tolerate and, 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 and adjust, adjust, adapt, accommodate. And then the result is, when the daughter-in-law refuses to bring more from her parents, they just burn her alive, you know. Yes. But now India, in India they have given a new rule. And the rule is, the moment there's any bright burning case in any family, Though the in-laws, they prove that she committed suicide. She burned herself alive herself. But all the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, the brother, the husband, all are put into jail. All of them. The other day I went to Navsari, you know, just a, well, last week. And uh, I went to a jail, a prison, to give a lecture. And there, after speaking to the prisoners, we were coming out. I saw a family. And I asked, why are they here? And, they, and, the medic, and the jail superintendent told me that they are in prison, the whole family. I said, what happened? And they said that um, the daughter-in-law was burnt alive only a few days ago. And now the whole family is in prison until the case goes on and on, you know, and they are released. That will take months, who knows. And everybody in the prison. So just imagine. But it, we shouldn't go that far that we have to keep adjusting, accommodating. That's why the third and fourth power are there. The power to discriminate. And the fourth is the power to decide. You know, they are number three and number four. Because after tolerating and accommodating for a while, you should know what to do next. Therefore, power of discerning, or, or, and then the power of decision, power of uh, deciding, or judgment. Now, what do we mean by power of discernment, or power of, uh, you know, what do you say? Uh, what's the third power? Discernment, okay. It's the other word used for it? Huh? No, before that? Discernment, we say, no? Discernment. Any other word for it? Is discrimination. Okay. So discrimination and, and then decision. Now, we have to give priority. What is more important? This is the real meaning of discernment or discrimination. That's why, you know, the, when they say the saying, wealth lost, nothing lost. Health lost, something lost. Character lost, everything lost. That's the saying we, we say here. Because when you want to know what to give more importance, which one to give more importance? You have money, you have health, you have character. Now if it is between money, wealth and, and health, what is more important? Definitely health. I go for wealth at the cost of my health. What use is it of, you know? I've ruined my health just in order to get wealth, to become a multi-millionaire. I ruin all my health, you know? Don't eat at the proper time, don't sleep at the proper time. Too much exertion, physical exertion. Too much stress. Naturally, you can't earn money just like that. And ultimately, stressed out, heart attacks. You know, nowadays, young executives they get heart attacks, young executives, heart attacks at the age of 30, 35. What happened? 
Why? Because stressed out. And then the doctor tells them, okay, now slow down. You have had enough. You have to change. This is what Baba says, if you won't change yourself, the change will make you change. That is because now you have got a heart attack, now you have to slow down. No? Why not do it beforehand? And after getting that problem, heart attack, okay, all the money which was earned is then used up in for the body, for the health, to get the health back again. We say when, they say in Hindi, the English translation may not be that, that good, but in Hindi it is said that, uh, the translation is, that when any disease comes, it comes at the speed of a horse, immediately, oh, I have this disease, I have this, oh, you are surprised, do I have it? such a thing? Okay, you have a doctor has diagnosed it. But if it, when it has to go, it goes at the speed of an ant. It comes at the speed of a horse, because it comes all of a sudden. And it goes at the speed of an ant, because ant speed is so slow. Leaving a scar behind, it doesn't go away 100%. It leaves its side effects, you know, and therefore it's always there. But Wealth lost, nothing lost, because with wealth we compare it to the dust of the atmosphere. You know, where there's pollution, there's so much dust. You go to Delhi, you go to Calcutta, it's so dusty, so much polluted. You go in the morning with white clothes and within two hours the whole, the whole dress is totally, you know, dusty and dirty. Just in one hour or two hours, hands so dirty, everything. It was not like that in a clean place. So money is compared to that dust. If it comes, you wash it, it will go. And again it will come because there in the atmosphere, it's, it's not gone. You can't escape it. So money is like that, it comes and goes, it's always rolling. If you have money in the treasure store or in your, in your, uh, you know, in your suitcase or in your trunk or wherever, it's not money at all. Money means that it's always rolling. That's why it's to be put in the bank, because in a bank it's used as a loan. The government gives us a loan to the poor people, to the farmers, to the, for, for business, you know, all that. It is used and you get the interest. So instead of just putting it away and not using it, it's always good to put in the bank. Now, money is like that, but health is more important than that. So not at the cost of your health we go for wealth, never. But character is more important than even health. Now, this is how we understand. Someone is, maybe he's after my character. And he says, if you won't give me your character, means... You know, once the Baba was saying this morning, criminal assault, I will kill you. Now here we have to decide. I don't mind dying, but I will never give up my character. This is my promise. I have promised to God. You know, you can think of this. It's such a deep thing. I won't speak more on this, but what I would like to say is that character is much more important than anything else because that leaves a scar on the soul. Health returns, of course, not to that extent. It does leave, that disease leaves a scar on the body. But it can cleanse the soul because the karmic accounts are finished. But if I give up my values of value of purity, which we have made to God, just imagine, not to any human being, it leaves a great deep scar, scar is a small word, a stain is little bigger, but it leaves a big flaw, like a flaw in the diamond, is deep rooted on the soul, which will not go for many birds. 
And that's why Baba says, never mind if you have to die for it, but don't give up your purity. It's a big thing. That's why some people are afraid of making any promises, you know. In the world, there are people who don't like to make promises. They say, if I make a promise, I don't keep up to that promise, if I better not make, keep a promise. But Baba says, and Baba was saying the other day, you keep little courage. This is like making a promise. This is the courage, the vow, the promise, the determined thought. And Baba will give you, you know, endless help. How Baba will give us endless help? Because of our purity. Even if somebody is trying to harm us, trying to do something, it will be obstructed immediately. The shield of protection will be there to protect the soul. This is how we experience. They dare not touch us. This is the feeling. This is the experience. You must have heard of this, you know, the incident of Brahma Baba in the Yajna. You know, some people opposed Baba because Baba spoke about purity and they used to come and tell Baba, Baba, you talk about purity to these young sisters who haven't seen the world. Let them become your age, 60 years, then let them lead a leap your life. Why are you telling them at this young age? But Baba would say, it's not me, I'm not telling them. It's God the Supreme Himself. It is He who is saying it. He, it's He who told me. Me too, to lead a pure life. I too didn't know that I had to lead a pure life. So I'm not saying it. But some people, they thought, yes, let, him, let us get him killed, you know, so that this institution is finished. Because if the leader is gone, finished. So someone came. He was a Sardarji, a Sikh, with a sword. But he came very humbly. The sisters didn't know anything. I mean, they took him to Baba. But then, the moment he came in front of Baba, Baba appeared to that person like Guru Nanak. And Guru Nanak was his guru. He got a vision immediately from Baba of Guru Nanak. And his, he could not take out his sword. He could not do anything. And immediately he fell at Baba's feet and said, Baba, I didn't know that you were so great. There are so many examples of this type. That the shield of protection comes from Baba, or it's a shield of our own purity, which comes in front of that person who's trying to attack. Therefore, our values are very important. We should never give in. Never mind if wealth is lost, if health is lost, but values should never be lost. But when will they not be lost? when I am soul conscious. That's why Baba says, Baba is ready to help you. He will be a protector, on, but on the condition that you are soul conscious at that time. If you are body conscious, then Baba is not responsible. It's so simple. So we say power to uh, discriminate. And then power to decide. That's why in the power of decision we show a scale. Now a scale has three things. It has the needle, which is vertical. It has a horizontal rod. And it has got two scales at the bottom, you know, in a balance. So the vertical rod the, the vertical needle, the horizontal rod, they all have a meaning because it is in the soul. In the soul, which, the soul which has to decide this. So what we say is that vertical needle actually stands for the mind. The horizontal rod stands for the intellect. And those scales at the bottom stand for the sanskars. Mind, intellect and sanskars. The mind should be very stable at that time. In Baba's remembrance and in that soul conscious stage. 
the stability of mind she is very important if we want the right decision secondly that intellect horizontal rod which is the intellect means a stage of equanimity in praise defamation victory defeat in all these opposites which we have to face in this world because this world is a world is a relative world everything is relative in this world nothing is absolute so we have to we have to be in the midst of those opposites one moment i will be praised the next moment i will be defamed you know nobody will keep me praising all the time he will defame me also one day if i have accepted the praise i'll also have to accept defamation why should not i mean i won't if i if i'm accepting praise then why should i not accept defamation i don't want to accept defamation i want to accept only praise then that is not a state of equanimity but i accept neither i accept neither praise nor defamation because i have to be stable in both if i'm accepting i'm not stable therefore horizontal rod stands for a stable intellect and how do i do that when i'm aware that i'm only an instrument it is baba's power working through me baba is the guide and through me baba is guiding i'm only an instrument so if i get success in the task which i have done i am not ex- i am not the one to be praised it is baba because i was only an instrument and if i don't accept the praise because i didn't do it baba did it though through me but it was baba who did so why should i accept the praise i'll say no it's baba and if i do not get success if i am defamed i don't accept that too because at least i did my duty well that is more important that's why in, in the gita there is written it's written beautifully do your actions properly accurately because what you do is in your hands your actions are in your hand but don't think of the fruit leave the fruit to god that means if there is no success i'm not affected because at least i did my duty well my responsibility i took up well i can't expect success all the time so even if there's defamation i'm not i'm not upset because internally i know i did my duty well this is called state of equanimity stable in both in praise and defamation victory and defeat and sanskars the those scales it means i give importance only to the values because they are my original values just like the scales give importance only to the weight and nothing else whether you put a stones on one side of the scale or you put diamonds on the other side of the scales the scales won't distinguish whether there is a stone or a diamond it will just give the weight that's all only one thing nothing more the value is of the weight on a scale that's all not value in the term of money or how much it costs and therefore the weight he is our values of the soul so i pay attention to that and that's my decision so at the cost of my peace at the cost of my inner happiness at the cost of my inner strength and my purity i will not go for anything else situations come so it's not i have to tolerate i have to tolerate no when such situations come we have to face and in the picture we show a dead body you know people taking the dead body to their cremation ground and at the back we show a small lamp and the storm and the la- the storm is trying to um a uh, finish that lamp to blow off the lamp 
and the lamp has the song the lamp has link with god and so however much the storm is trying to blow off the lamp the flame the lamp will does not blow off because its power is coming from god you know we say when does a lamp extinguish for two reasons it extinguishes and if those two things are blocked they are not allowed then the lamp can continue one thing is strong wind it should be protected from strong wind and the second is the oil in the lamp should always be put in you know always so if the oil is there in the lamp it will never be extinguished so the oil should always be kept putting in it and it should be protected from the wind then the lamp will continue to be lit so baba says the soul is like a lamp and if the oil of knowledge or the oil of baba's remembrance is always there and i'm protecting myself from the storm of maya i am always lit and no one can do anything to me even if the body dies well that may die but i am eternal baba says never mind if you have to die but don't give up your happiness you know these these are such strong words don't give up your happiness even if you have to die dying is not a big thing my happiness is more important than even death just imagine can you think it to be that important happiness more important than even death death is the last point but my happiness is more important because i'm not the body i'm a soul and i am the soul with these values purity peace love happiness now this is called facing the situation that's how far we go in facing the situation such circumstances come inevitable situations come which we cannot avoid they have to come they are bound to come they will come and we face them because god is with me this is called the power to face but let us not understand god is with me in a different way you know some take in a different way they say well god is with me and therefore he will help me i don't have to do anything and i just sit cross legged and cross uh, fingers and i say god is with me he will help me i have to make effort no doubt and the help will come from others now how will god help me you know you must have heard of a joke very interesting joke on this that once there was the announcement that the the dam has cracked or the it has broken and this this water has oozed out and it is coming into the village and the village uh, is uh, being um, Uh, what do you call that is a flood in the going to be flood in the village therefore all the villagers should leave the village and go to higher places so all the villages ran but one person refused to go he said god will protect me god will protect me you know it's a, it's a joke his neighbor came to him and said come on let's run this village is going flooded the water is coming is hardly a few miles away he said no god will help me god will help me he refused to go well everybody else went and the water came it came into his hut his house and he just you know just ran to the top of the roof the water came to the level of the roof he stood up you know what to do he didn't know what to do the water was level was rising it all flooded it uh, and a, a boat came a boatman came a boat and said come on sit in this boat and i'll take you across otherwise you will die you will drown he said no god will help me you understand me? and he stood up you know looking up in the air and a helicopter came and that man in the helicopter he put a, a ladder he threw down the ladder and said come on climb it you will be saved 
He said, no, God will help me. God help me. He look, was looking in the sky. He didn't care for the ladder. And then he went to God. <laughs> That's what you can say. And, and he asked God, why didn't you help me? God said, I did. I sent you three messengers. Who were those three messengers? The neighbor, the boatman, and the helicopter man, the pilot. I sent them to you. They were my messengers. But you didn't pay attention, you didn't understand. So Baba says, do not take it in this, don't take it in blind faith. We have to make our efforts too. And here we understand the drama. Well, after the incident, the only thing we can say is drama. Because we don't know the reasons, you know, why it happened. But the faith is strong. But of course, the help comes from God through the different means, no? Through the inspirations, the touchings. Yes, go to this one, go to that one. It's Baba's touching. But not with a selfish motive. If the selfish motive is there, the touching will never be accurate. It's my body consciousness, my ego. It should be a selfless motive. Something for the service of humanity. And I'm thinking this way the intuition will come, the inspiration will come accurately from Baba. And I have no other waste thoughts. And that's another subject. And then the power to cooperate. Next. You heard about this this morning. Giving and receiving power. I won't be very um, long on this. But just two lines in the, about the power of cooperation. Why do we not receive cooperation or why do we sometimes refuse to give cooperation? Because of two factors. One factor is my ego. I don't want to change. I want the other one to change first. This is one thing. If I change, the other one will automatically change. Therefore, let me change first. Let me give first. I should not expect the other one to give before I give. Let me give first. This is the first thing. And the second reason why cooperation is not received is because the minus. First is the I-ness, the other is a minus. This belongs to me. That belongs to you. I don't care for yours, but I will not give you mine. Instead, Everything is Baba's. Of course, we have to keep ourselves to our rules, no doubt. That's different. But it is Baba's. No, nothing is mine, anyway. So if it belongs to Baba, if I'm giving cooperation, it's not mine or yours. It's Baba's. So where it belongs to Baba, I mean, where's the question of mine or yours that I will not give cooperation to you? So I have to give cooperation because it belongs to Baba. In a center, if we have give different departments, okay, you do this job, you do this job, you do this job. There is distribution of work. But distribution of work does not mean that I will not touch another person's department. I don't care. Let it get spoiled. It's not my job. No. Each job, each task is a dignity. It's not just distribution. It's a dignity of work because it's God's work. It's not my work or your work. We are working for God. We are God's helpers. As Baba says, you are the world transformers helping God in the task of world transformation. So when it is God's task, why is the question of yours or mine? Of course, there are, you know, the rules are there. The understanding is there. But the mental understanding on a different level, it is God's work. And therefore, no ego at all. That's power of cooperation. I have to change first. Always remember this. And then the seventh power, the power to withdraw, like a tortoise. This is not the physical power, it's a very subtle power. Mentally, to just give a full stop in a second. Past is past. In a second. 
That's why Baba said, apply the three points yesterday, before yesterday's morally. I am a point, Baba is a point, drama is a point. This is the power to withdraw, if you go into the depth of it. You can elaborate yourself. How these three dots or points are the power to withdraw. In a second I go beyond, I am a point. Baba, you are a point. Drama, point. Apply a full stop in a second. And then the eighth power, the power to pack up. Again, very interesting example we can give. You know, in that example in the picture, we show a whole doll and a suitcase, like a trunk in the old pictures. I don't know what is in your pictures which is, are used in the West. But in India, we show a whole doll and a trunk. Trunk means uh, as like a suitcase. Usually in the olden days, people used to, when they would go on a long journey, they used to carry three things. Nowadays it's different, but in the olden days. One was a handbag. Why it's called handbag? It was a handy bag. All the things which you need again and again, you put in a handbag because you had to open again and again. So the one was a handy handbag, the other was a suitcase and the third was a hold all. Hold all means everything what you don't need in a journey, you put in a hold all. And you open only at the end of the journey, not in between. <laughs> only at the end of the journey. Suitcase, sometimes, only sometimes, but handbag, all the time. So a handbag, a suitcase and a hold all. So Baba says, mind, intellect, sanskars, now they are your handbag, suitcase and hold all. Mind is your handbag. Now what do you put in the mind? What do you put in the suitcase, the intellect and what do you put in the hold all, the sanskars? This? Handbag means all the points of knowledge which Baba has given us. We must never forget who knows when, which point of knowledge will be necessary, at which time. We must be aware of all the points of knowledge. And then we have to choose at this time, in this situation, which point of knowledge should I apply. Let me not apply the wrong point, you know. It's like when I have to apply the brake, what would happen if I apply the accelerator? You know, it's like that. I should be applying the brake only. And when I have to apply the accelerator, a brake, a accelerator, I should not be applying the brake. I should be applying the accelerator only. So what point to use when? That's why Baba sometimes, the children are very clever. They try to give Baba's gyan to Baba only. You know? Baba, you say this, but we are using that point at the wrong time in the wrong situation. So power to pack up here means the points of knowledge should be there with us all the time and we should know which point to use when. So that's in our mind. And then the intellect means all the virtues, the values, the powers. What Baba talks of, they should be in our intellect. Yes, I should order and that power should be available with the help of that point of knowledge. And then do the righteous actions. And after doing the righteous action, forget about the fruit. Put it in the hold all of the sanskars, not to be opened in between. Don't say, oh, I did so much for him, but he did not do anything for me. Why do you? Bother. You do what you are able to do. If he did not do his karma. I don't want, uh, you know, a return in this life. I will get multi-million fold return in the future. So I should never think of that in that way. That why didn't he give me when I gave him? Uh, and I gave him, okay, he didn't even say thank you. And now when I'm asking him, he's not giving me anything. I gave you so much. No, no. Whatever I have done, I put in the hold all. 
has become part of my sanskar. I will get multi-million fold return from Baba. I don't want from human beings. I should never say, I did so much for you. But see, you deceived me. That again will create karma. He knows best. And then, huh, I have put it as part of, away as part of my sanskar. Because I will get the reward in the future. I know it. I don't even have to remember it. So that becomes my sanskar. This is called the power to pack up. And the second meaning of the power to pack up is carry with you only that which is useful for you in the journey. When you're packing, when you, come, when you came from your home to Madhuban, you didn't bring your whole house and all your household things with you. No, no. Just your things you needed in the journey or in Madhuban, that's all. Because only what's useful for the journey. So I have to have that decision in me, the discrimination in me, what is needed for me at this time most. Because that will be useful for me in this return journey. You had that class the other day, return journey. So mind, intellect and sanskars, what have to be put in them? Because only that will be useful for me in my journey when I return home. Because when I reach Dharam Raj Puri, I will be hmm, told to declare. So I should be able to go through the red channel, the green channel. Yes, open everything. Then I'll go free. But what if I go through the red channel? I'll be able to, to open up everything. And the result may be, and if I try to go through the green channel, when I have to go through the red channel, and I go through the green channel, I will have to pay so much penalty. Because I wasn't truthful, I wasn't honest. Because everything will be opened. I cannot take anything illegal. The impurities, the vices, the old sanskars will not accompany me in the old world. Therefore, I have to put all will accompany me in my, my handbag, suitcase and hold all. This is what we say, packing up, power to pack up. Okay?